So what we're going to do today is we're going to introduce a, a new topic called polynomial functions. Polynomial functions. And the nice thing about this is we have been dealing with and playing with polynomials our entire year. We have dealt with polynomials. So we're going to make sure that we know what we're talking about when we're saying polynomial. And we're also going to chat about what a function is, which we've already spent time on. So we're going to get now into details. For example, if I gave you three, uh, 2x squared plus 7x minus 11 equals 0, and I said, can you solve it? You might say to yourself, oh, I can complete the square maybe. I can do the quadratic formula. I can uh, snowflake and factor. I can solve this. I could graph it even and see where it crosses the x-axis. So I have the skills to, gr to solve this. Well, if I make a change and now say, do you have the skills to solve it? And at first you'll say, I don't. But it turns out that everything that we've done so far is going to not just build us to the threes, but to the fours and to the fives. So it doesn't matter the exponent. We're going to give you the skills to solve any of them. And a lot of the skills that we've done, whether it's completing the square, quadratic formula, or some variation of these, um, snowflake, all of these we're going to bring together to solve polynomial functions. Any polynomial function on the planet, uh, if it's solvable, we will try to make it so that you can do it. <clears throat> After a while, it gets so tedious, though, hence the invention of computers, so we can deal with x to the 200th in a century rather than in most of uh, human history to try to solve. So two things we're going to attack, kill, destroy today. Number one, we're going to classify polynomials. Classify just means to put them in some sort of a group, like juniors, seniors, and sophomores. Those are classifications of people at this school. We could say, um, what other classifications? We could say the adults and the, the, the youngins. Those are the classifications. Whatever the case may be, we're going to figure out a way to, to uh, put things in groups and see if there's anything true about these groups. <clears throat> Next, we're also going to introduce graphing today. And specifically, we're going to focus on describing behavior of a function. A way of review, standard form. How do we write these in standard form? Negative x squared plus 9 is correct. And just paying attention, the 9 is positive, but it's not written, so I bring down it as a plus. Uh, the x here says minus, so I bring that as a negative. So when I commute them, effectively, I'm commuting it around a, an addition property or addition uh, sign. All right, next one over here. How do we put this one in standard form? 4x squared plus 5x minus 7. Now when we look at these two, and it's just a small uh, uh, sample set here, when we look at these two, what made this standard form? How do you know you were in standard form as opposed to irregular crazy form or something like that? Anything in standard form looks like this, is we look at the variable, then we look at the exponent, and we decrease the value of the exponent. So, so maybe we'll arrange the terms. So we have to define what we mean by terms, too, uh, by the value of the exponent. So here's my exponent um, in descending order. So x to the 2, and this one has no x, so that's going down. x to the 2, x to the 1, and there's no x, so that would be in descending order. So by way of introduction, we see that we can classify this triangle by its angle and by its sides. The same way. Polygons can be classified by a variety of things. Two things that we can classify by is the highest degree, and the second is just classified by the number of terms. We just count the terms. So we'll make sure we understand what we mean by terms momentarily. So first off here, what we can do is look at the highest degree on the exponent. This one has no exponent, so the degree is zero. So we call this puppy a constant. The next one has the exponent a uh, degree of 1, which we don't need to write ever. But if you were to graph that as a function, it would make a line. Hence, we call it linear. We all know the next one, the power of 2. We call it a quadratic. 
So by extension, power of 3 would be cubic. And the degree, a fourth degree. Here's a new word for you probably, quartic. You can see the derivation there of quartz. There are four quartz per gallon, hence quartic. What's that? Quarter, also quarter, four quarters per dollar. And then lastly, five. And I'm not exactly sure how to say it. I was saying quintic earlier, but someone made it sound better by quint quintic. So um, whatever cranks your tractor, I guess, on that one. But maybe quintic we'll go for. Just like with the triangle, we could say it's a right triangle because of the angles. We can also say it's isosceles by the length of its sides. So in the same way here, I can count the number of terms. So let's just clarify what we mean by a term, okay? A term is always, well, um, oftentimes separated by adding and subtracting. Separated by add or subtract, all right? So for example, x minus 9 has two terms. One of the terms is an x. The other term is a 9, or more specifically, a negative 9. Um, and it has two terms. So you just look for the adding and subtracting and then count all those parts. Now, the, the reason why I said most of the time is because this first example only has one term, and there's not, it's not separated. You can't separate from itself. So it has one term, so we call it a monomial. Mono meaning one or lonely. So class, what do you think two is going to be? No, that's three. With two. Think, think the thing I ride to school every day? Binomial. Binomial. There we go. Bicycle. Bi meaning two or twice. So what would three be? Trinomial. Trinomial. Now after a while, it gets too tedious to actually keep naming these. Like, what do I say, quadnomial or pentanomial? What about five? Is it penta or is it quinta? I just, no clue. So again, uh, one term is simply monomial. We already said that. You don't need to write it again. Uh, binomial. Binomial there. And lastly, a fourth. You could actually come up with something, but generally when it gets to four and above, we just call it a basic polynomial. And you might be specific, a polynomial with four terms, but polynomial is sufficient. Polynomial just is the generic term for all of them. So let's read through this and decipher because here we're actually getting into serious looking mathematical stuff. And the key thinking about math, folks, is not whether or not you always get the right answer, which that's the point of it, but is can you look for patterns? Can you establish patterns? So look at this. The standard form of a polynomial function arranges the terms by degrees in descending numerical order. A polynomial function, P of X, in standard form looks like this. So let's just break it apart. It says P of X equals A N times X to the N plus A N minus 1 times X to the N minus 1, etc., so notice that each one of these, except for the last one, each one of those are just my coefficients. So I'm going to abbreviate that here. They're my coefficients, the numbers in front of the variable. Except the last one, it's ca called a constant, um, if it has no variable. Next, this right here has an exponent that is some number. It just happens to be the largest number. So then we go decreasing. So if we started at 3 like we do here, we decrease to 2, to 1, and finally to 0, so there is no variable left. So that's just the idea. The most important part are the exponents here, and that they are decreasing. So we look at that pattern. Standard form does not really pay attention to order by way of the coefficients. They just tag along. We go order by exponent in decreasing order. Just to show um, some specifics here, n is a non-negative integer, so we're not talking about fractions. We'll get to that later. Um, your coefficients have to be real numbers, so we're not dealing with complex numbers. And notice that each one of these has a special name. The term that has an exponent of 3 is called the cubic term. The square is called the quadratic term linear term, and finally my constant term. 
So we'll, in this class, in your book, we'll often refer to the cubic term, the quadratic term, the linear term, the quartic term, etc. And so you need to quickly identify, oh, I'm talking about three there.